I'm Richard Taylor and I'm here in the Orton Goldhay area of South Peterborough where later on this evening Cambridge Police's um, Peterborough South team will be setting their West Area's priorities for the next quarter. I've just returned to Cambridge after um, attending the police priority setting meeting where the police priorities for the southwest corner of Peterborough were set earlier this evening. There were about 14 or so people in the room when the priorities were set. Um, seven or so of them could be described as members of the public, uh, the others being um, four councillors, um, the chair and um, the um, police. But one of the most striking things about the meeting was that the, the councillors did, weren't the ones setting the priorities, it was anyone who turned up. So the police priorities in um, that part of Peterborough are set by mob rule. If you've got 10 or so people, you can get together, turn up and have the police priorities um, set as, as you like them. I don't think that's the right way to go. I think we should be using and strengthening representative democracy and the councillors um, should have been um, sat at the front of that, that, that meeting this evening and they should have been um, taking the decision. And one of the um, other interesting points about the uh, meeting was the lack of statistics presented to it. Um, those present were trying to decide how the police protest should be set without knowing um, about the occurrences of crime and antisocial behaviour um, in the area over the last quarter. One of the councillors um, suggested that because she had been aware of um, an injury caused at um, a road traffic accident involving a motorcycle that um, that a priority should be set to deal with um, careless and dangerous driving by motorcycles. It seems like they've got a problem in one of the areas where um, people are using motorcycles inappropriately, they're driving round and round roundabouts at um, very steep angles on their motorbikes. Um, now she suggested a priority was set so I um, made the comment that we didn't um, at the meeting know um, how many injuries were being caused and it might be a useful thing to have to have injury statistics for um, on, on the roads and in relation to um, things like violent crime presented to the panel meeting. And the chairman, who is not a councillor, he's an independent local businessman, um, he, d he decided and he stated that he didn't want to see priorities set on the basis of evidence such as that, but he, what, he thought they should be set on the basis of what the public turning up to the meeting um, asked for. Now I think that was wrong. I don't have any problem with independent people um, chairing these meetings, but the policy decisions such as that should be made by elected councillors who are accountable. And if they decide to set police priorities um, ignoring um, evidence, then um, or, or without having the evidence in front of them, then they can be held to account for that. Now I do think that um, what people say at these meetings, and particularly what people say through their elected representatives and things that elected representatives are hearing from multiple people, are really important. And they, and they are a valuable form of evidence that should go into the police priority setting. But I think we should also have, we should have data, crime data from the police and we should have data from all other, many other sources as it is um, as it available. We should have the speeding data presented as a matter of course and we should also have um, the um, crime and accident related injury data um, presented to each um, police priority setting meeting. It was um, worth turning up because after I had uh, made my comments on um, statistics one of the members of the public present asked for um, speeding and traffic offence statistics to be brought to the next meeting. Um, the chairman and the police then uh, agreed to do so. So hopefully next time um, in that area then that panel will be making um, more informed decisions. As it was this evening they had no data at all on um, dangerous and careless driving, um, how many penalty notices etc the police have been issuing for those and what the levels of speeding were um, in, in the area. The meeting started with a presentation by um, unelected appointee Olive Main, who is a member of the Cambridgeshire Police Authority. Um, she was talking about the forthcoming um, elections for police and crime commissioners. Speaking on behalf of Cambridgeshire Police Authority, Olive Main said that she was dismayed that those um, so far who have put themselves forward or have uh, made clear they intend to stand for a um, police commissioner in Cambridgeshire are all backed by political parties. She indicated that she would um, have liked to have seen um, people standing who are not back from political parties. She particularly addressed John Prescott's candidature and um, said that she didn't want to see old political hacks like him in the role of police commissioner. Other interesting items from the meeting included a slide presented of um, named individuals uh, and um, what had happened to them through the um, police crime and justice system uh, over the last quarter and um, that slide was titled Justice Seen, Justice Done and um, I, I think that that's the kind of thing which, which we should be seeing uh, an awful lot more of. Another interesting point from the meeting is that it was chaired by an independent local businessman as I was told all the um, police priority setting meetings in Peterborough are. I thought this worked and I thought that this worked well, however we have to be careful that the chair is not taking policy decisions. I would like to see the policy decisions there um, taken by local councillors. 
I asked Olive Main about the police authority's plans to wind down and disband itself following the election of the police commissioner. Um, she told me and the uh, meeting that um, the authority plans to retain its staff and, and the, the authority staff intend to remain employed um, up till the April following the election of the police commissioner. Um, I'm quite puzzled by this. So she, she defended that by saying that that's the point at which the new budgets come in and when the police commissioners will really take control. Um, However, the police commissioners will be in office from November and I'm concerned that they will not have um, the freedom to hire the staff they want um, from that point if the um, current police authority staff, I remember the police authority secretariat costs a million pounds a year and the clerks on a hundred thousand pounds a year, um, the, the new commissioner will not have the opportunity to um, rapidly change that and put in a, um, a much leaner operation. Uh, Olive Main stated that the police authority currently, um, running as it does at a cost of £1 million a year, was cheap. Uh, she suggested that uh, police commissioner's offices would cost about the same. Um, personally, I can't imagine that we in Cambridgeshire will elect someone as a police commissioner who will say up front on their um, manifesto, I'm going to spend a million pounds a year running my office. Um, that just doesn't seem likely to me at all. And I, I don't think it's, um, it's what should be done. I think there's an opportunity for um, in enormous savings there. In general I think one of the most important things is that there don't seem to be any major problems in that area. People seem to be quite happy um, with um, the way it is being policed and indeed the state that that, that area is um, currently in. Um, one of the biggest issues raised was antisocial behaviour. The problem that um, was described was um, youngsters playing football loudly during the day and disturbing people who um, work shifts. Now, I'm not sure, we don't, uh, that's all the detail that was presented to the meeting, but it doesn't sound to me from that as if that's something which the police should be getting involved in. Um, I think we should have the police focused more on um, crime and criminality rather than things which are, are, are merely causing a nuisance. Other issues raised um, included some level of drug use, as clearly um, drug production and dealing. Um, one of the members of the public um, present raised a concern about um, young girls age of 12 or so um, using drugs for, um, which you could see out of her, um, her window. So uh, there clearly are, is, is a, a drugs problem there and that was raised. Another right issue discussed was arson. Um, that appears to have previously been a problem but with no cases in the last six months that was um, dropped as a um, formal priority. Restorative justice was um, mentioned. The sergeant making the presentation appeared to be floundering um, when discussing this matter. Um, he wasn't particularly clear, but he did say that um, the two cases of restorative justice that they've had in that area over the last quarter were people who had been arrested, so restorative justice was used um, post-arrest. The PCSO present stated that restorative justice was being used a lot, although the um, statistics presented um, in a PowerPoint presentation stated that it had only been used twice. Um, I pointed out this discrepancy and the PCSO denied stating, um, actually just had done, um, that restorative justice has been used a lot in the area. Graffiti was one other topic mentioned and the meeting was shown tags, um, described as juvenile looking tags um, by those who um, from around the area. It was suggested that um, teachers and family members uh, might be able to identify those responsible, um, for example if they are using the same tags as they are putting up around the area in, on their school books. One of the councillors present at the um, meeting um, objected to uh, my live tweets, which I, as I do at all meetings I attend, were, was publishing throughout. Um, he wasn't identified, he's a Peterborough city councillor um, who was um, known as Gavin only um, throughout the meeting. Um, I'm going to look him up when I get home and find out who he was. <laughs>